sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's tutorial is going to be on this look here, this fresh face and pink lip. I'm using a couple of new products today and I'm just going to give you my just quick review on them. And um, yeah, so let's get started. So I'm using again the Rimmel Match Perfection 24 Hour Moisture Hydration Foundation. This is in the color 200 Soft Beige. Um, I really like this foundation. I didn't use any primer because I wanted to see how the foundation acted on its own and it really does blur your pores and it's really great. The only thing I don't like about it is the smell. It is very perfumey. So if you're not into that, I wouldn't suggest this. So then I'm going to go ahead with the BH Neutralize palette and I'm going to take that light brown color and a blending brush and I'm going to cover the eyelids. I did put some foundation on there just as a primer. I wasn't, I didn't really want to use any primers today. I just wanted to go and see how that foundation did on its own. So I'm just going to cover the lids with that to mattify the foundation and then we're going to go in with that darker brown and a denser buffing brush and we're just going to go into the crease just buffing that in creating um, a light wash of color for the eyes. The eyes are going to be pretty simple today. There's not going to be really um, like any dramatic eye, no like, like no liquid liner, no defined crease. It's just going to be um, a light wash in the crease area just to give a little bit of color and then it's the main focus is going to be on the eyelashes and the lips for this look. So here I'm going in with that darker brown and my Luxie Tapered Blending Brush, the 205. And we're going to go into the same area, just um, a little bit higher up in the crease, and we're going to blend that color in. Like I said, it's not too particular for this look. We're just blending the colors in. We're just giving the crease um, area a little bit of color, and that's about it. So we're just going to go ahead with that in the crease, and then the same thing on the other eye. So now I'm taking the same dark brown color and I'm using this smudger brush from Still Spa Essentials. This is like a Walmart brand, I think. Um, it's the number 009. I really love this brush. It's very, very densely packed and it's really soft. It's a great buy if you're ever in Walmart. And then I'm taking that same darker brown again and just applying a bit more into the crease with this pencil brush. I wanted it to be, I know I said it wasn't really defined, a defined look, but I just wanted it to be a little bit darker in the actual crease area just to um, make the eyes look a little bit deeper. If you're not into that, you can totally skip this step and just um, put the light washes of color into the crease um, and totally not do this at all. But I just, just for my eye shape, I wanted to, to add this in just to create the look that I was going for. And here I'm just repeating those steps and then going in with that tapered blending brush again just to blend everything out and make it all smooth. So now we're going in with the brows and I'm using the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade in the color Ash Brown. And I use the MAC 266 to fill in my eyebrows and we're just going to skip through this because it's the same as always and you know how to do your own eyebrows. And for brow gel, I'm using the Elizabeth Mott Queen of the Fill Tint Brow Gel in medium, like I always do. I love this. It really keeps the brow hairs in place, and it's the best color that I've found so far in a brow gel. So I'm going to keep using this one until I found, find a better one. If I do, uh, I might not, but you know, we'll see. So as you see here, I've got a little blemish on my forehead, so I'm going to use my Fit Me concealer in 15 fair it's a little bit light for concealing but um is what i had on hand at the moment so i just used it and then i'm just using my blending sponge 
like I did for my foundation and I'm just blending that in and I was noticing like I'm, I'm not getting a lot of sleep lately guys obviously you can tell um, so I just used a little bit of a reddish orangey peachy um, eyeshadow just on those dark parts of my under eyes just to conceal it a little bit more um, I noticed that it does blend into the um, concealer a little bit but I didn't mind that because it made it more peach anyways which is what you're going for so it wasn't a big deal so I'm just going to put that in a triangular shape under my eyes and then on my chin on the bridge of my nose and the middle of my forehead and I'm going to blend those out with my blending sponge once again And to set my concealer, I like to use Levitation from the Kat Von D Shade and Light Contour Palette. And this is just a blush brush, I believe, from the Body Shop. I'm not sure what number it is because it's um, it's pretty much faded off of that. But I like to use the blending brush, um, sorry, the blending sponge, just to blend out any creases that might have happened in the concealer, and then go in straight away with the powder just so that no creases form. Because once you set in creases in your um, concealer they are there they are not going to blend away so you have to make sure that you blend them away with whatever um, tool you use to apply your concealer and then without you know moving around too much put the powder on so that it sets it so then I'm gonna go in with contour and I'm using subconscious from the same Kat Von D palette and this is just um, I can't remember what the name of this brush is but I believe it's a highlighting brush from BH um, so I'm just going to go in. I like to contour with this brush. I just find that it's the perfect shape. And you don't want to go past the center of your eye when you're contouring, guys. You don't want to bring it too close to your mouth because it looks it can look kind of odd. So I'm just going to blend that upwards really quickly here. And I'm doing a little bit of contouring under the chin, just shading underneath there. You know, we don't want to have a double chin. So I'm using the same levitation and I used a little bit of somber. It's a little bit of a deeper color um, just under there. And then I'm taking the same levitation, I'm sorry, subconscious, and I'm just going to contour my nose a little bit. I do have a very rounded end of my nose and I'm not, <laughs> it's always been a thing that I've disliked about my face. So I'm just going to contour that a little bit just to make it a little bit straighter. Um, and then I'm going to take the Sephora micro smooth baked illuminizer in stardust which i've been using a lot recently um, it's one of my favorites and i'm just going to highlight the tip of my nose so then with my luxie tapered blending brush i'm going to take that lighter brown and we're just going to like really easily just blend that underneath the on the lower lash line um, we're just going to make it you know just color it a little bit just make it a little bit smoky i didn't want to leave the lower lash line bare because i don't know it just it looked it looked like it needed it. And then I go in again with the smudger brush and the same color and I'm just adding a little bit more and then we're going to go in with the darker brown that we used on the eyes and add that as well. So then I'm taking this lighter color in the same palette and I'm going to highlight the inner corners of my eyes and under my brow bone. And then I'm going to take the same baked luminizer from Sephora and I'm just going to highlight the cupid's bow of my mouth. And for um, mascara today, I'm not going to use any false eyelashes because I wanted to show off this product that um, I think is really amazing. Uh, I've, had, I've had to use it a little bit and play with it a little bit to really master it, but this is the unique 3D Fiber Lash Mascara. Um, it says I have two parts to it, so this is the actual mascara transplanting gel part of it. So it's kind of like a, um, a um, like a regular mascara, but it adheres to the fibers, which we're going to apply afterwards. So like I, like you see here, you just apply it to your lashes like normal, you know, coating the entire length of your lash, and then you take the second tube, which has the fibers, and you want to apply those just to the 
from the middle to the ends of your eyelashes. I know people say just to apply them to the ends, but I like to apply them to the middle part of them as well, just to give them a little bit of volume. I find that if you only apply it to the ends, you just get the length. If that's what you're looking for, then you can do that. But I mean, I like voluminous lashes as well. So then you apply those fibers, and then like you see here, you just go again in with the transplanting gel, which sets in the fibers, and then you've got instantly longer and fuller lashes. You don't need to apply false lashes, which, you know, can be a pain in the butt sometimes. I'm not a fan of them. I like the way they look, but I hate applying them on myself. So if you're looking for an alternative, this is something you should maybe try out. Uh, if you're looking to purchase any of these products, any of the unique products or this uh, mascara duo in particular, I will have my website link down below in the description box so that you can check that out. And I mean, even if you're just looking to um, browse through the rest of our products because we have amazing products um, for the rest of your face as well, um, you can do that through there. So I'm just going to do the same thing on the other eye. Like I said, just use the transplanting gel first, and then you put the fibers, and then you put the transplanting gel as well. So here, this is my new lip product that I'm using today. This is the Rimmel London Provocalypse 16-hour kiss-proof lip color. Um, I did wear it for the rest of the day. Um, I, I mean, I do have children, and I um, do a lot of... I do a lot of mom work throughout the day so I don't feel like I get the same amount of wear out of my lip products as other people who maybe don't have children because I'm always, you know, I'm always kissing them and rubbing my face in their necks and just loving them so I mean I guess I wear out my lip products a lot more than other people but I love the color, I love the way it felt. It has, a, it's like a two-parter so it's got the step one intense color and then it has step two lock and shine which I'm going to put on um, in this next clip. Um, I wasn't sure if it was supposed to, if the color was supposed to get dry first before you put on the lock and shine clear part. It, I was, as you can see here, I'm trying to look at it to read and see if it says anything, but I couldn't find anything, so I just went ahead and put it on. But this lock and shine part really made it, like it felt really comfortable on my lips, but the color, it honestly did last. Like it didn't transfer, I drank coffee afterwards, I ate, and it stayed on my lips, and it didn't transfer to my coffee cup. So I'm giving this a thumbs up. I think this is great. This is in the color 310 Little Minx. So, um, they had, and they had a really wide range of colors. So um, I think I'm going to give this a thumbs up. And then I'm just going to contour a little bit on my forehead and the sides of my face. And I did apply a blush, but I'm not sure where the clip of that went. I applied the Jordan Blush number 30 in Dusty Rose. And then once you do that, this look is complete. And once we've done that, this look is complete. I hope you guys enjoyed this simple tutorial. Um, I know it wasn't too crazy, you know, too dramatic or anything like that, but I wanted it to be just a simple eye focusing on the lashes and the lips and that new lip product that I tried out today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you recreate this look or any of the other looks I've done, please um, tag me on Instagram or Twitter. I'll have my handles down below. And please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate all of the love, and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye!